Today, we have a fascinating topic that can open up new ways of understanding health and wellness, especially for our senior viewers, of course. I'm thrilled to introduce our special guest, Pepe Cavavalli, a renowned iridologist. Pepe is an expert in iridology and the study of eyes, which offers valuable insights into the body's overall health. Today, she'll be sharing how iridology can help seniors maintain their well-being and detect potential health issues early on. Pepe, thank you for joining us and uh, we're excited to learn more about what the eyes can, tru I mean, can truly be a window to our health. Well, thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here, oh, to be able to share one of my passions oh. about the eyes. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, and we would like to learn about the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so, uh, please greet our audience. Hi, I'm Pepe Kakavali Ebert, and I've been an iridologist since 19, or 2016. Oh, wow. So, it's just amazing what the eyes can reveal. Nice. So, let's start hearing about this uh, topic, okay. Pepe. So, um, so how can iridology help seniors understand their overall health? Well, iridology has been around since the 1800s. And it's just amazing that people either know about it or they've had it done 20 years ago. And it's not 15 years ago, it's always 20 years ago. So it goes back four generations. So with seniors, how many people knew about their parents' health? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, did they know about their grandparents' health or their great-great-grandparents' health? A lot of them did not know anything about their health. They, our parents never talked about it. I'm a senior. My parents never talked about it unless there was a definite health issue that we became aware of. Oh, I see. So it's been around centuries, huh? Yes, yes. And that we didn't even know. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. So what are the specific benefits of iridology for older adults in maintaining their wellness as they age? It's making better decisions. If they know what's going on in their bodies that is causing um, a disease that could be developing, if they know about it early enough, they can make better choices as to what they can do to improve that particular organ. That's or a health good. situation. Oh yeah, that's bad. But to me, I believe that they would like that better instead of going to the doctor because a lot of seniors might be scared to see the doctor. But you could see a friend. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a friend. Like a friend. <laughs> yeah, who could just say, "Oh yeah, you can check out this doctor, and uh, he will help you and find out more about it." Stuff like that. Correct. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Uh, my next question, wherein seniors would like to know, can iridology help in detecting early signs of chronic conditions commonly faced by seniors such as arthritis or digestive issues? Absolutely. If, oh. if we can bring up a chart Oh, yeah, here. sure. Okay. Okay. This area right in here is the stomach area. Oh. So that's where your digestion area starts. So if I see things in this area, markings in this area, then I can tell that they will have digestion issues or they have di digestion issues. So this eye chart, this is for the right eye and this is for the left eye and they are a little bit different. The markings in here will show different conditions that they could you know, possibly develop. Making oh. better choices if they know about them will prevent things from developing a, in a more critical area. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, especially if you say, oh, you're building up cholesterol here mm -hmm. and there. So, I mean, maybe they could just, before seeing a doctor, they could just control their diet. Absolutely. Before they could, then so that, I mean, they could already regularize whatever and then they see a doctor if that diet works. Absolutely. On their own, you know, mm -hmm. like yes. home remedy right. first. Right, exactly. Yeah, do a home remedy first. Uh, and I mean, that's to me, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Letting them know what I'm doing is educating mm -hmm, them yeah. about their 
issues. Yes, I agree. Whether That's it's true. negative or positive, we want to increase the positive and we want to negate the negative. Mm -hmm. Let's improve the negative. Yeah, to the Filipinos, <laughs> too much lechon. <laughs> <laughs> too much lechon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do some excuse, but not too much. <laughs> and then they find out, oh, I have high cholesterol. cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lower the lechon. Yeah. And, and that will show up in the eye. Yeah. The, the top part of the eye will uh -huh. have a, a kind of a, a creamy color. Uh -huh. And that shows high cholesterol. It's called lipemic diathesis. Oh, see. And they, and they may not have it. However, the four generations that I talked about, somebody in their family may have had it, and it shows up in their eye, but if they don't take care of it, it could develop into high cholesterol. So would you say it's just gen genetic or acquired? It's genetics. Genetic. Yes. Also, it's more of genetic mm -hmm. rather than acquired? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it can be acquired, acquired depending on if they're not making really good choices. Yeah, I agree too. Because one a doctor told me, I mean, you don't have to have diabetes even if your family has it. But I mean, it's a it's a way or a way of living, right? And I'm glad yeah. that you brought up diabetes because yeah. that is one that everybody knows about. Yes. That shows up in four places. It'll show up right here at the two o'clock marking, the four o'clock marking, the eight o'clock marking, and the ten o'clock marking. And that's one of the first places that I check. I have a, a, a checklist that I go through, but that shows diabetes, that's the pancreas. So if diabetes runs in your family, I'm gonna look and see if those markings are, are in your eye. If they are, we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna ask you questions. Do you know if your parents had diabetes? How about your grandparents, anybody in your family? Yeah. So this way here, diabetes is, we know that it's cholesterol that turns into sugar. So are you eating a lot of cholesterol types of food? Are you eating lots of sugar? So there are some alternatives that you can do to alleviate the sugars and the cholesterol. So making just better choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, folks, like if you crave for chocolate or you crave for something, they said it's just Two, is that two minutes or two seconds that and then it, it disappears yes. so so it's just like when it, when you crave it's just like forget about it. if it's bad forget about it because means, I mean, sometimes i do i do crave for chocolates that's why mm -hmm. i have this tiny chocolate oh okay this is your mm -hmm. chocolate for the day and that's it but right. not to to buy something big and then you have to eat them and oh there's still more and you have to <laughs> wobble you do the little mini bites yes, yes, so it mini takes bites. care of that yeah craving. the craving right or just a bit it will disappear in a couple of it's that seconds or mm. minutes and then <laughs> you're good you don't have to crave yeah and the yeah. dark chocolate is better than the milk chocolate and the white chocolate True. so again that's one of those choices that you can make mm -hmm. if i'm going to have chocolate let me have the dark chocolate uh -huh. that doesn't and you know you have to look at your sugar mm -hmm. in the dark chocolate and go with the higher one it's a little bit more bitter mm -hmm. however it'll still take care of that craving that we True. all seem to have yeah, and, and does it does water helps in uh, like most definitely, no, definitely. yes and that's Take one thing water. with with seniors is, uh -huh. you know they don't like water yes they, so put a little bit of lemon in it so it gives you a better taste more, or yeah. some cucumber mm -hmm. you know yeah or you know oranges the more beneficial yes mm -hmm. so and it's best to drink water uh, room temperature Oh, yeah. Versus cold, because mm -hmm. then your body has to heat up the water so your body can uh, absorb it and mm -hmm. utilize it, which people don't think about. Mm -hmm. They like that cold water, and the body's got to do an action to be able to get it to assimilate into your body. Sure. So, small, you heard that, folks. small, <laughs> yeah, small little changes can make a very big I, difference. I agree. And I that's what we need to look agree. at is those yeah. small little things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's go, um, let's go to the next question, Pepe. Okay. So how does iridology complement traditional medical practices for seniors? Like combine the Western and the iridology. Uh, well, you still need to see your doctor. I will, never yeah. I will never recommend not seeing your doctor. Mm -hmm. You've got to follow those. However, I like to go back to how can you help yourself so that you don't have yes. to see the doctor. But the doctors are very, very important and you want to keep them in mm -hmm. your life and in your True. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So, but if you can prevent things from happening that you don't have to see a doctor, wonderful. There are tests out there that you can do that you don't have to see a doctor for, like what condition is your thyroid in? Uh -huh. And if I oh, see yeah. thyroid is right here in the right eye and thyroid uh -huh. is right here, if I see markings there, then there's a test that you can take at home that you don't have to go to a doctor. Oh, that's and cool. then if you find out that you do have a situation, then you talk to your doctor. And uh -huh. then he may recommend a, uh, a medication that you need to take, but he may not. So. Yeah, it's just like if symptoms persist, then see a doctor. Right, yeah. exactly. But if there's some home remedy, home remedy that uh, can, would pro probably work before Ma they see a doctor. Correct, okay. yes. And that's what we're always looking for. Of course. Let me. them be their own doctor. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> it's just like listen to your body. Exactly, mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... What lifestyle changes can seniors make based on insights gained from iridology session? Well, we so talked we covered that a little bit. Yeah, we yeah. already covered. The, you know, the most important mm -hmm. thing is water. How much water are you intaking? You should take half of your weight in ounces is how much water you should drink on a daily basis. Oh, they so always have the old rule was eight ounces. Uh -huh. But you know, if you're a larger person, you may need to drink more water. Oh. So look at your weight, divide it in half, and it's that in ounces. Oh, got it. Listen, folks, please, please repeat that, uh, Pepe, for the audience uh, benefit. Okay, take your weight, get on a scale, weigh yourself, and then whatever your weight is. Let's say you're 120, well then divide that in half, that'll be 60 ounces. 60 ounces. Is, is what you would wanna be drinking daily of water. And get yourself a jug or several bottles, whatever works in your lifestyle, and start drinking it. You can be sipping it all day, and it's not, it's not real difficult. Mm -hmm. And again, if you don't like the taste, put a little bit of lemon in it, and that will definitely make it a little bit more palatable for you. And healthier. And healthier, yes. Mm -hmm. And you want to drink good water, mm -hmm. not tap water. You want to get the spring water. There's lots of waters that are out on the market now. Oh, yeah. And if you like to go to distilled water, you definitely have to put some minerals in it because it depletes everything. And that will start depleting from your body. Your mm. body is a fabulous machine and it will steal from Peter to pay Paul to get what it needs. So if it needs minerals, it's gonna to go to your bones. So you need to make sure that if you drink distilled water, and I know a lot of people like that, you need to put minerals in it. Oh, I see. Okay, um, so but the thing is distilled water, they scrape the minerals, so, so that's, that's why, why you, you have, have to, to add, add it back in. Uh, yeah. Okay, so like take some uh, mineral pills, um, like no, that. You can just put a little bit of salt in it. Just oh, a little bit I, of salt, oh, that's a mineral, it. it's very oh, easy. It oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't got use it. your table salt, you want to use Celtic salt or real salt, That's that will be better for you. Do oh. not use Himalayan salt, oh, it's, no. too hard to, it's too hard to break down, they're usually too big of a granule. Oh. So just a little pinch in there will definitely help, make a big I difference. See, got it. Mm -hmm. But not too much, folks. Not too much. So, uh, Pepe, the, I have another question. Okay. Are there any common health issues among seniors that iridology can help address or monitor more effectively? Well, again, the most important thing is the water. It again, is correct. It, yeah. That is just so mm -hmm. important, and that contributes to so many issues with seniors, with everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. water is life, folks. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Pepe. How can iridology be used as preventive tool for seniors to maintain um, health? Well, once they know the areas that are an issue for them, then they can make better choices as to how to improve that area of uh, potential imbalance is how we basically look at it. I oh. do not diagnose, but I can just identify areas that are out of balance or potentially out of balance. Oh yeah. So at least they know that. Oh, uh, this these are the areas they need to improve Pro on. Correct. Yeah, just yes. like what you showed in the chart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, I and mean, for seniors managing multiple medications, can iridology provide insights into potential side effects or interactions? No, not, that we do not do. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would they would have to talk with their doctor, the doctor. or talk to the pharmacist. Uh, mm -hmm. The pharmacist is a good source because they would have a list of all of their medications and see to make sure that they complement one another and one isn't fighting another one and causing more problems. So the pharmacist is a good place to go and also talking with their doctor. So would you say this is already considered scientific or not necessarily? Like what would you, con if it's if regular med medicine is scientific, so what would you call iridology? Uh, probably on the alternative. Alternative. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what advice would you give to seniors interested in using iridology as part of their health routine? Basically have an, an analysis done so that we can identify exactly what their uh, potential imbalances are. Every body is different. True. So again, we basically look at the correlation of each area, the uh -huh. organs. If we see something in one area and another area, then there's probably an issue there. So we would basically talk about that particular organ or organs. True. And just mm -hmm. like I men we mentioned earlier, at least before they see a doctor, they already know what's going on with their body and then they can try to control it before they can even see a doctor. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, this is my everybody's concern. Can iridology offer solutions or improvements for seniors dealing with energy levels, mobility, or cognitive function? Oh, most definitely. Absolutely. Wow. Most definitely. Once you identify the areas of concern or an imbalance, then you can do something about it. And a lot of times the lack of energy is fatigue is caused by the adrenals, which is right here. If I see markings in the adrenal area, that's an energy zapper. So we can basically look at how to improve the adrenals. You know, the kidneys, are the kidneys, are there any very markings? Important, yeah. are very, very important, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heart issues, the bronchiolus, that's in this area here and also in this area right here. So wow. everything is related. So how can we improve the overall health? So. And then by looking through the eye, it's just like one next to each other. It's just like, whoa, you yep. really have to be special. <laughs> you have to specialize in this area before you could identify what's wrong right. with somebody else's body. Yeah, Absolutely. But it's good. I mean, the eyes is the window to the... Absolutely. I thought it's just the soul, so it's the health. Yeah, almost definitely. And mm -hmm. the spirit. And the spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. You know, the, the amazing thing with the eyes, the pupil, some people just study the border of the pupil. Uh -huh. I'm an iridologist, so I look at the whole eye. Uh -huh. Some people just look at the white part of the eye, which is the sclera, and that's all that they study. I love color. Being an artist, I look at the eyes first and I see the beauty. Every wow. eye is just so beautiful to me. I see it from wow. an art standpoint, and then I look at it from a health standpoint. That's but even nice. the pupil, the pupil border, if you happen to be in an accident and you hurt your spine, this will flatten in a certain area, which wow. relates to the different areas of the spine. If it happens to be up on the top, it's going to be usually the top part of your spine. The middle part of your, if it's flattened on either one of the sides, it'll be usually the middle part of your, your back, which is the thorax. And if it's flattened on the lower part, it will be the lumbar. So this is information that's good for a chiropractor if yeah. you happen to be in an accident. This will change if it has been um, flattened once it's corrected in the spine, it will go back to being round. This, your pupil should be round. Oh, it will get fixed again. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, I mean, there's a right and there's a left. left. Would you say that the organs to the left is, you could see to the left eye, and the organs to the right, you see to the right eye? Well, there is a, there is a, a cross. There is a cross, and it's right in the back of the neck. So, a lot of times it's the right, it's the left side, and it goes the reversed. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So oh. you, you, you have to check both to, yes. to see if and which one crosses. Ex or? Well, ex and exactly. And it's not exactly the same. It's not a mirror to uh -huh. the eye. So you have, you have the spleen on this side and you don't have a spleen on this side. You have the gallbladder oh, on yeah. this side and you don't have the gallbladder on that side. 
So they're not exactly mirrors of left and the right. So you basically, and the left and the right are going to be different. It's true. They will have different markings in different areas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So would you say when they visit you, are you also giving them like what the, for example, there's something wrong with the thyroid. Are you going to give them the food that could help them improve their thyroid? Mm -hmm. What, you know, I, I cannot d diagnose again. I can just say there's a, you know, an imbalance there. And these are the things that would help with the thyroid. These are the things that would help with uh, the pancreas from people that have used whatever products or what we recommend mm -hmm. that they can uh, use to improve those areas. And mm -hmm. it's not uh, medicine, it's natural. It's natural, yeah. That's we good. work with, yeah, I work with usually recommendations from a vitamin standpoint. Some people like to work, eat or use vitamins. Mm -hmm. Some like minerals and some of them like the herbs. So um, it's, I give them a variety. I tell them how to go to, you know, one of the stores, the health food stores, and test to see if that particular vitamin that they're, they're deciding to get mm -hmm. works for them. When you go there, let's say they want to go get vitamin C. You go to a counter and there's this many different bottles of vitamin C. Yeah. What's the best one for mm -hmm. them? So I'll teach them kinesiology, which is very, very easy. It's leaning forward for a yes for a question and leaning back for a no. And they can just hold that product right up to them and ask the question, is this good for me? And if they lean forward, that's a good one. Oh. If it's not, it's, they'll lean back. Sometimes there's a lot of fillers in oh, these yeah. products that, you know, that don't agree with the body. They end up having an allergic reaction to it. So, so, so that's why, folks, I just like I said, listen to your body. <laughs> so I just found that out. But all I know is I listen to, to my body. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And a lot of people are very intuitive. So they can just, they just know. They don't mm -hmm. know how they know, but they know. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. Well, that's very informative. Thank <laughs> you very much, Pepe, for sharing your expertise with us today. It's amazing to see how iridology can be a helpful tool for seniors in maintaining their health and well-being. And for our viewers interested in learning more or exploring iridology themselves, I encourage you to reach out to Pepe and discover how this practice can support your journey to better health. We truly appreciate your time and insights today, Pepe. Yes, uh, Please uh, have some words for our audience. Okay, well, you can contact me. My telephone number is 702-219-9217. And I would love to hear from you and would love to look at your eyes and help you have a healthier body. Thank you. Nice.